Discover the top 10 most fearful warrior cultures in history as we delve into the shocking facts surrounding their fearsome reputation. From the battle-hardened Spartans to the fierce Vikings, learn about the warrior cultures that struck fear into the hearts of their enemies. Uncover the brutal tactics, legendary battles, and fearless warriors that cemented their place in history as some of the most formidable fighting forces the world has ever seen. In the world, there have been thousands of warrior cultures from the Vikings, Aztecs, Romans, Barbarians, Mongols, Celts, and Persians to the Samurai. These cultures based a significant part of their power and grandeur on the art of war, on the ability to have the most lethal and prepared warriors in history, and on the capacity to dominate their enemies. This lethality in battle was accompanied by something possibly more important than strength and skill itself. The motivation to achieve victory over the enemy, based on the warrior's philosophy of giving their all in a battle, even if it cost them their lives. It is incredibly intimidating to know that your enemy is motivated and willing to do anything to eliminate you from the face of the earth. Thoughts like these, accompanied by religious or mystical rituals, generated absolute terror in the unfortunate enemies who faced these brutal warriors. Bring the snacks, get comfortable, and get ready to learn about the 10 most fearsome warrior cultures in history. The Vikings, for example, had warfare written into their cultural DNA and are described by historians as fierce, cruel warriors of great strength and size. An important reason why the Vikings were so feared in battle is that they did not fear losing their lives. They were willing to do anything to gain glory for their people and to win because that is what they were trained for. On the battlefield, they looked at their rival with only one idea in mind. Eliminate them, win, and return to their people to celebrate their conquest. In fact, losing one's life in battle was well regarded by the Vikings, as it was considered a reward to live in Valhalla, a kind of paradise alongside Odin, their main deity. However, if there is a class of Vikings that chills the blood, it is the Berserkers. Covered with animal skins, Berserkers were elite Viking combatants who stood out for their ferocity in combat. They knew no mercy or restraint, to the point that some Norse anecdotes claim they could physically transform into beasts. Berserkers really needed to go insane to be more effective. It was not just about howling in battle frenzy but also about biting shields or behaving like animals. They screamed, beat their chests, and sometimes fought without armor, driven by the ecstasy of battle. Historians believe that hallucinogens and alcohol caused this frenetic behavior that made them lethal. The Mongols, commanded by Genghis Khan, were also a formidable warrior culture in history. The Mongols were fearsome warriors who showed no mercy. Their opponents were mostly well-trained archers, and their horseback skills were unmatched by any other army of the time. They were absolute masters in the art of war. The Mongols, under the command of Genghis Khan, were an empire of warriors known for destroying entire civilizations. The cruelty of the Mongols and their fierce reputation often caused cities and enemy armies to surrender without any battle taking place. To give you a better idea of their power, at their peak, the Mongol Empire controlled about 24 million square kilometers and is said to have ended the lives of 40 million people, approximately 11% of the world's population at that time. Genghis Khan controlled more territory in 20 years than the Roman Empire managed to do in 200 years, covering the territory from the Korean Peninsula to the Danube River in Eastern Europe. Housing a population of over 100 million people, and including regions as rich and important as China, Mesopotamia, Persia, Eastern Europe, India, and Russia. More than their ferocity, it was their superior tactics of logistics, combined with political organization and a ruthless leader, that allowed the Mongols to create the largest contiguous empire in world history. Around 636 AD, Bishop Isidore of Seville called the Huns, Mongol soldiers, the scourges of God's fury. This dramatic tone symbolically underscores the terror and destruction that this Asian nomadic order wreaked upon the heart of Europe. Genghis Khan once said, I am the punishment of God. If you had not committed great sins, God would not have sent a punishment like me. In recent years, cinema has shown us a glimpse of what the Spartans were like in their golden age, usually depicted as brutal, ruthless, and highly disciplined warriors. This representation is quite accurate, but reality is sometimes even more surprising. The Spartans instilled a great patriotic sentiment from a very young age. The childhood of these children was quite harsh, 
as they were constantly subjected to physical tests to become the best soldiers, which ultimately preserved their culture for many years. Throughout history, there have been numerous warrior cultures that have left a profound impact with their prowess in battle. From the Spartans to the Gurkhas, Zulus, Samurai, Mongols, and more. These civilizations derived much of their power and prestige from their military might and ability to conquer their enemies. The Spartans, known for their military discipline and patriotism, subjected newborns to physical examinations. Those with deformities were either exiled or eliminated without mercy. Spartan boys began military training at the age of six, living in barracks separated from their families. By age 12, they were treated as youths expected to show martial skills while surviving on minimal diets. Upon turning 20, Spartans became soldiers, remaining in active service until age 60. War was their life. They never surrendered in battle and preferred to fight to the death, famously demonstrated at the Battle of Thermopylae. In 1815, the British army attempted to conquer Nepal but was decisively defeated by Gurkha warriors. Recognizing their prowess, British officers began recruiting Gurkhas into the Crown's forces. Since then, Gurkhas have fought in numerous wars, including the World Wars and the Falklands War. Despite their stature, Gurkhas were known for their fierce combat skills, often engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with their sacred Kukri knives. The Zulus, an ethnic group in southern Africa, notably clashed with the British during the Anglo-Zulu War in the 1870s. Despite technological disadvantages, Zulu warriors, known for their organized combat tactics and iconic spears, inflicted significant casualties on British forces. Samurai warriors of feudal Japan are revered for their martial prowess, loyalty, and adherence to Bushido, the way of the warrior. Samurai trained rigorously and were expected to prioritize honor over life itself, often resorting to ritual suicide rather than face dishonor. Mongol warriors, led by Genghis Khan, forged one of the largest empires in history through unparalleled military tactics and ruthless conquests. Their mastery of horseback archery and logistical brilliance enabled them to dominate vast territories from Asia to Eastern Europe. These warrior cultures were not only skilled in combat but also used fear as a psychological weapon, incorporating rituals and strategic methods to intimidate opponents. Their military strategies, combined with their steadfast determination to achieve victory, have left an indelible mark on history as some of the most formidable and influential warrior societies to have ever existed. The samurai warriors have been immortalized as icons of military skill, stealth, proficiency with weapons, loyalty, and honor. They based their lives on strict codes of honor and principles known as Bushido, the way of the warrior, which emphasized loyalty, duty, discipline, and honor, even above life itself. Their steadfast dedication to perfecting their techniques and principles, coupled with daily training and knowledge passed down through generations, granted them the great reputation they hold today. For a samurai, cowardice in battle was the ultimate shame, and they were expected to accept the possibility of losing their lives. The practice of seppuku, a ritual form of suicide, involved plunging a dagger into the left side of the abdomen and moving it across to the right, a painful way to end one's life. In some circumstances, another samurai could decapitate the warrior, thereby maintaining their honor intact. The Mexica culture, one of the most interesting and rich that has existed, was highly fierce. They sought not only to end the lives of their enemies but also to capture their people and subjugate them to their will. Their reputation struck fear into many neighboring peoples. The state of Mexico was focused on military expansion and political dominance over other peoples, as well as the demand for tribute. War was essential in Mexico politics, with two main objectives, the subjugation of enemy cities to extract tribute and the capture of captives for sacrifices in religious ceremonies. The rituals of sacrifice, where the heart was removed and enemies were eaten, terrified the Spaniards. These practices were used as rewards to encourage warriors to fight. Jaguar warriors were sent to the front lines of combat, displaying ferocity, while eagle warriors were responsible for exploration, espionage, and messaging. They used bows, wooden swords edged with obsidian, and spears. The combination of the jaguar warriors' ferocity and the eagle warriors' cunning created one of the most fascinating military forces in ancient history. 
Kamikazes were a special Japanese attack unit in World War II, specializing in suicide attacks against Allied Navy ships. The word, kamikaze, means, divine wind. Japan, on the brink of defeat, employed kamikazes as a last-ditch effort to change the course of the battle. These attacks resulted in the deaths of 7,000 Allied soldiers and 3,800 kamikaze pilots. In 1943, Japanese philosopher Shigenori Toyama called on the Japanese to sacrifice themselves for their country, which motivated many to join the kamikaze units, although many did so due to social pressure. Kamikaze planes had enough fuel for a one-way trip, leaving no possibility of return. Only 19% of kamikaze planes hit their targets, but their direct impacts were devastating to Allied ships, affecting Allied morale. Such tactics prompted Americans to develop atomic weapons to attack Japan and end the war. The Maori, an indigenous people of New Zealand, developed a unique warrior culture due to their isolation. Their warrior tradition earned them the reputation of being some of the most dangerous warriors of the South Sea. When Europeans began settling in New Zealand, wars erupted. The Maori believed combat was sacred and fought to gain spiritual power and prestige. Their primary tactic was the dawn ambush, silently moving close enough to strike their unsuspecting enemies. Surviving a brief battle and not being on the winning side meant a brutal death. They used intimidation to dominate their enemies, such as the Hakka dance, which involved weapon-waving, tongue-poking, and terrifying noises. The Hakka was a warning that instilled fear, and an imperfect performance was considered a bad omen. The protruding tongue warned enemies they could become food if defeated, as Maori consumed their enemies to absorb their strength and used their bones to make weapons and tools. Additionally, they kept enemy heads as trophies. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Native American warriors such as the Apaches, Sioux, Comanches, Cheyennes, Cherokees, and Navajos were feared by Americans and Mexicans. Their guerrilla tactics influenced current military tactics. The Apaches, under the leadership of Geronimo, were particularly difficult to defeat. They used nature and their knowledge of the terrain to their advantage, despite the equipment and weaponry advantages of the Americans. They used bows, arrows, spears, clubs, tomahawks, and any other effective weapons. Before the arrival of Europeans, the natives perfected their weapons and tactics. One of the best-known terror tactics was the practice of scalping. Scalping involved cutting off the scalp from a live, wounded, or deceased enemy. It was not just about cutting hair but about tearing off the entire scalp, including the skin. Native Americans did this to intimidate their opponents and partly to possess the enemy's soul. They believed it protected them if they placed it on their shields. Many of these enemy scalps were hung in villages, given to spouses, and even exchanged for rewards. Native Americans are by far one of the most fearsome warrior races to have existed. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you thought about these warrior cultures and which ones you found the most formidable. Subscribe and activate the powerful notification bell so you don't miss any new videos.